you see that red spot there? That's from the, the bombs that uh, Lori or Melania Trump, Lori McBride or Melania Trump are dropping over my head. That that felt like acid yesterday. Apparently she's, uh, I am allergic to yeast toxins. So if all these yeast germs, if I'm inhaling the yeast and then they're trying to escape from my body because of the Seroquel and coming out, I'm just, that, that was burning last night, boy. I took a little extra Seroquel and I'm starting to drink out of my cup that gets Zach Knight semen because it's like a super potent antibiotic. But that's not the reason I'm making this video, but I just wanted to show you what those bombs that she's dropping over my head, what they're doing to me. I'm getting yeast spots on my skin. Um, I wanted to talk about the subject of nudity and sexuality from Jesus Christ's perspective because I've noticed that um, either Melania Trump or Lori McBride are trying to shame me by allowing um, some of my nudes, my Playboy nudes, to surface. My actually, this has been going on for years, so I think it's becoming more mainstream. And I just wanted to t let you know that it was actually Jesus Christ Himself who convinced me that it was okay to pose for Playboy. Um, Jesus Christ showed up to explain to us uh, what to what explain what happened to Hugh Hefner when he died. Actually, Hugh Hefner was going to give a, me and Brent his Playboy mansion, and Lori McBride, when she found out, she was fuming, jealous, and that's why she killed him. She hired a a very an obese black woman named Urethra Fosizzle, I think that was her name, and Urethra was going to do a Apparently, Hugh Hefner liked to have uh, black women, um, some erotic asphyxiation thing he liked to do, where he would almost, you know, quit breathing, and then that's how he would get an erection and all this stuff. I'm not into this, but apparently he was into it. It's cool with Jesus. Jesus doesn't have a problem with it. In fact, um, <clears throat> he died for, Hugh Hefner died for two reasons. He died of autoerotic asphyxiation, because he... Because the black woman got on top of him and she wouldn't get up. And so she suffocated him. And he also had an explosion. I think it was in his testicles because of a blood clot. And he lost a lot of blood. So he died for two reasons. So Jesus said it was technically a murder. And also um, he died from the blood clot explosion. That caused one of his testicles to explode. And he got a lot of blood loss. But Jesus said that he was having a blast with Hugh Hefner in heaven. And I said, really? I said, how did, why did you get to heaven? Is it because he had a good heart? And, and said, yeah, he pretty much had loving motives. So that's why he got to heaven. So, but he did. Uh, of course, once, once Lori, he was writing his will and he was going to give me and Brent the Playboy Mansion. And Lori prevented that from happening by murdering him before the will became official. So, that's the reason he was murdered. Uh, you got to understand something about Jesus. I'm going to make a statement which may shock a lot of theologians out there and evangelical Christians and those who think I'm crazy and there's no way I could be meeting with the real Jesus because why isn't he stopping me from posing nude and making a fool out of myself? Um, you have to understand something about Jesus. In Genesis 1, in the Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve were naked and not ashamed. So when the world is not filled with sin, nakedness, nakedness is cool. There's also a naked prophet in the Bible, Isaiah. Did you know that God ordered Isaiah for three years to preach naked to the nation of Israel? He said, I want you to take all your clothes off. I mean, just start naked. Just like the way he came out of his mother's, uh, you know, when he was born. And he said, I want you to preach to them and tell them that, they, that if they don't quit their idolatry and if they don't quit their sin, that they're going to go into captivity and their, their captors will make them all go into captivity with stark naked with no clothes on. So for three years, Isaiah preached stark naked and God told him to do it. So you might say, boy, this God is a... God, Jesus is not a cock blocker, okay? Actually, here's the st here's the sh a statement that I wanted to make. I'm actually working on several novels at the same time. 
And I'm, one of my novels is going to be entitled Silver Skies, The Millennium, where I'm going to have a story set in the future millennial reign of Christ. And I've been doing research for this, and I've come to the conclusion that in, okay, right now we are in pre-tribulation earth. We're very close to the seven-year tribulation. The next major event's the rapture, the rapture of the church. Then we have the seven-year tribulation. At the end of the seven-year tribulation, the Antichrist and the false prophet who I suspect may be Lori McBride, Angelina, ballerina, transgender man, um, man, will be destroyed and thrown into the lake of fire. Satan will be put into the bottomless pit for a thousand years. And then Jesus is going to reign for a thousand years. This is the premillennial dispensational view, which is the correct view, by the way. If you study the Bible and believe what you read and don't spiritualize the text, the only time you should think something's a metaphor in scripture is when the Bible says it's a metaphor. If the Bible doesn't say it's a metaphor, it means it's to be taken at face value. Jesus has the same problem that I have. A lot of people listen to me and they think, you're kidding, right? I didn't, did I say I was kidding? You say, you're kidding about the sentient tacos and burritos. You're kidding about posing for Playboy and Jesus told you. You're, no, I'm not kidding. I'm dead serious. But the funny thing is when, um, when, when something's exposed that Satan doesn't want exposed, he tries to create the impression that the bearer of the mess, the messenger is, is, is facetious or joking. I guess it's because he doesn't want them to take the message seriously. Um, so what I was going to say is in the millennium, I think nudity is going to be very common and the rules for what constitutes sexual sins is going to change dramatically. There will no, there will be no R-rated, X-rated movies in the millennium because Jesus Christ is going to be a, a loving dictator over the whole earth and he will not allow any movie to be shown that he does not approve of. And since he approves of everything, everything's going to be G-rated for general audience, even the children. I believe nudity is going to be rampant in the millennium. A lot of theologians correctly believe that the millennium is going to be Genesis 1 over the whole earth. Just like the, it'll be Garden of Eden over the whole earth. In fact, I think there are a lot of verses that support that in the Bible. In the Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve were naked and not ashamed. In fact, Jesus told, told us that he cried when he handed them their clothes. They sinned when they were teenagers. That's what he said. So, you might say, you know, one of Lori McBride and maybe Melania Trump may be in on this too because they're both hypocrites. One of their strategies is to say, this lady's crazy. Her men are trolling her and they've... T They've talked her into believing that she's a Playboy centerfold. Actually, I have been a Playboy centerfold. Um, but let me tell you how I do it and how I have no problems with it as a Christian. Um, I, Jesus Christ made my nude body so that if my men see me nude, it heals them emotionally and mentally from their it's a, I, my nude body heal has a healing effect on men who view it. So I think that's why he likes for me to pose for Playboy. Uh, and also those of you, if you do happen to chance upon a nude of me, that's that, that, that Lori McBride or Melania Trump leak out. Um, if you watch it, you'll notice that the way I present myself, I don't take have the typical attitude of your typical playboy centerfold. I try to come across as an angel in the way I present my nude body to the world. Uh, that's because my motive for posing nude is to heal my men. And like I'll have like a flower next to me or I'll be looking up at the heavens nude. So my, I, I'm like an angel in the way I pre present myself, which may explain why when Melania Trump said, mirror, mirror, who's the fairest of them all? And the mirror answered back, Gail, Cord, Jewler. And she said, no, it can't be. You know, just out of curiosity, I looked, it's easy to find a nude of Melania because she posed nude, you know. Um, I may end up having the same problem in a couple of years, but um, I asked myself, honestly, Gail, I mean, 
I'm not, I don't have a jealous bone in my body, but Melania is not hot. I'm afraid I have to agree with her mirror. <laughs> you might say, why? You know, it's really funny. She's thinner than me. She probably has better measurements than I do. And, and when I was thin, I was kind of emaciated because of the, the, the yeast infection. I could eat like a pig and um, I couldn't gain a pound because I had a systemic Candida auris yeast infection from the Jesuits and the yeast was getting the food before my body got it. And that's why I was so thin. But even then to my men, I was beautiful. Even with um, some parts of my body that were emaciated, and that's because when you looked at my face, I had an angelic glow. Um, very, I do my nudes. My motive for doing my nudes is to nurture and heal my men. Every nude I've made has been for that reason. Even the ones where I do playboys, it's to nurture and heal my men. And in the millennium, sexual sins will be judged by motive more than by action. So in the millennium, the way God's going to decide whether you've committed a sexual sin will be whether you did it to, for pure lust, for selfish reasons, to compete. If you're opposing nude to compete or to promote pure lust, it's a sin. And it will be condemned as a sin in the millennium. You say, how is Jesus going to handle that in the millennium? Um, I believe there are going to be a lot of executions in the millennium and Jesus will be the executor. And that's why it's going to be such a paradise in many ways when he's ruling because sin will not be allowed to rule over the weak and the helpless and those who are pure in heart. God will just say, you, all right, all right, you just, you raped that woman. You forced yourself on her and she didn't want you. You used your body to use that woman. Out, execute, you're gone. That'll be the millennium. On the other hand, there'll probably be false accusers. They're going to come before the judges and say, this person, this person tried to, this person um, showed their body nude in public. And, and I think, I think they should have more covered themselves up. This is an indecency. And the judge is going to say, we're in the millennium, folks. Cool it. There's nothing wrong with showing their beautiful body off in public. They, they do it because they're trying to they're trying to let the world know that Jesus made them beautiful and they're proud of who they are and they just want everybody to admire their beauty. Cool it. And then they'll say, what's your problem? You jealous? Hey, did you know jealousy is death penalty in the millennium? Yeah, I think it will be. I think it'll be death penalty because jealous people be, uh, become real problems. So he's going to say, you know what? In the millennium, jealousy is death penalty. <laughs> boom, boom. Go and go to hell. You're gone. You said, you really think so? The reason nudity is going to be rampant in the millennium is because it'll be death penalty to be a liar, to be jealous and competitive in the use of your body or in sex. And if you use your body for jealousy, competition, or to make somebody who's truly beautiful look ugly, you know, by, uh, let's say you, uh, I think you will be executed in the millennium. So the reason Jesus approves of my nudity and the way I pose for Playboy is because he knows my motives are to nurture and to love. Motive will be the criteria for determining sin in the millennial reign and even more so, there will be no sin after the millennium. It's going to be totally gone. But in the millennium there will still be sin. There will be the sin nature not in the resurrection saints who will be there, but in the ones who survived the tribulation and lived on into the millennium, they'll still have their sin nature. And sin will be determined by motive. So if you used your body for competition or to lie, cheat, steal, or murder, you will be executed in the millennium. If you use your body just to show off Jesus' beautiful creation, it'll be cool with Jesus. If you use your body to nurture and love like I do, it'll be cool with Jesus. And if you don't have inner beauty, if your face doesn't glow with angelic love and light, you will be ugly to Jesus. And it might even be the death penalty in the millennium.